Hey guys, back in another adventure today. Today I'm out at the Great Ocean Road. For those of you who aren't from Victoria or haven't heard of it, it's basically a 243 kilometre stretch of road which starts in Torquay and ends near Warnville in Allensford. And it's basically just a beautiful stretch of road that follows the ocean. Uh, there's heaps of stops along the way like lookouts, uh, beautiful beaches, waterfalls, like obviously the 12 apostles that everyone's probably heard of. So heaps of things to see and do. Um, so I started this morning out in Torquay. Uh, I didn't vlog because I've been there before. I didn't want to spend too much time. So I just stopped at Bells Beach, but there wasn't much happening there. So I've just come out now to Split Point Lighthouse, which is in Aries Inlet. And I'll show you around here. So it's just a short walk to the lighthouse here. Stands out from a mile away. It's so tall and got the bright red top on it. So I'm just doing a tour at the lighthouse. It costs $10, which is a self-guided one. And head up all these stairs. <laughs> um, but it should be pretty cool at the top and it's still an operating lighthouse. So there's a guide at the top that tells you about the information and also along the way, there's all these boards that you can read, which is nice. And there's some of the flags that the ships would use to communicate with land or the ships. I made it. Pretty awesome view from the top here. It's beautiful. So I'm glad that I paid the $10 to go up the top of the lighthouse. Um, it was really good and the fact that it's still operating is really interesting as well. But if you do want to come, just check the operating hours because today's Sunday and it's only open 10 till 3. Uh, but no bookings, so you just kind of rock up and go. The next stop is the Memorial Arch, which I think is where they honour the World War I returned soldiers uh, that actually built the Great Ocean Road. It took them 14 years, so it'll be interesting to see that. And then, yeah, I'm basically spending the next four to five days along the Great Ocean Road. Not really sure I've got some of the first three days planned, but um, we'll just see what happens and go with the flow. And I'm spending the night tonight just out of lawn. Now I'm just out at Erskine Falls, just out of lawn. Um, as you can probably hear in the background, it's a pretty loud waterfall. So I think there's a lot of water rushing at the moment, which is good because it's obviously winter. Um, so yeah, we'll go have a look. It's not a very long walk. There's two platforms, like the lower and the upper. But yeah, they're both very short walks. So there's a lot of stairs down to the lower lookout. A lot of people struggling to get back up and losing their breath, which is pretty funny. I'm laughing now, but that'll be me on the way up probably. <laughs> It'll be worth it. So Erskine Falls is beautiful, definitely worth a stop and definitely go to both lookouts. The bottom one is probably better, uh, but it's obviously a bit more of a walk and the stairs coming up are a bit of a killer, <laughs> but no, it's not that bad at all. And it took like, what, five, ten minutes probably to get down there, five minutes if that. Um, very busy, I think it's a very popular one, probably because it's so close to lawn and um, yeah, you don't have to walk far to get there, but if you can, probably go early morning or later at night when there's less people. And just a side note for anyone else wanting to come and visit, the road down is very steep and there's a sign saying like you can't come down towing caravans and that sort of thing, so just be mindful of that. So next stop I think I'm going to go try and find Teddy's Lookout, I'm pretty sure it's pretty close, which should be a good view of the coast. Alright, so I found Teddy's Lookout, it was only like a 10 minute drive from Erskine Falls. And there's actually tracks to three different lookouts here if you want to do a walk, which is cool. But I think today I am just going to do Teddy's Lookout.
All right, well, that's another very big recommendation, Teddy's Lookout in Lawn. Yeah, easy drive, like literally two second walk. And it just shows you like the actual road winding around the edge of the cliffs. And it's really beautiful just to show you like, yeah, what the Great Ocean Road is like and that you're driving, you know, next to the sea the whole time. So I'm just gonna head back to the car now and figure out what I'm doing next. <laughs> I had a whole list of like all these waterfall walks to do and stuff today. But, you know, they all take time and a lot of them are longer walks and I've just spent longer kind of enjoying it and taking it slow today. So I definitely won't be doing all those walks and it's already like three o'clock and obviously it's winter, so no daylight savings. So it's gonna be dark at like five o'clock. And in case you hadn't already noticed, Matt is not with me on this trip. I'm doing a solo trip. He is working, unfortunately, but um, yeah, just me. So no dad jokes this time, <laughs> but rest assured, he'll be back in the next vlogs after this road trip. <laughs> Alright, so I decided I would come set up my tent. I'm staying at a caravan park or holiday park tonight. Uh, it's the Cumberland River Holiday Park and it's beautiful. I was looking at ones in Lawn and they're just kind of like, you know, in town, small sites, crammed in next to each other. And then I saw this one, they have beautiful like river sites. You can probably hear it behind me and see it. <laughs> but yeah, it's absolutely stunning. It was $30 a night for an unpowered site. So I mean, you keep saying places like this is going to add up, but I'm only doing it a couple of nights gonna stay in some parks victoria campsites a couple of nights and then stay in some accommodation a couple of nights so just change it up and yeah so i'll show you now i'm just gonna set up my tent and then head off and watch the sunset somewhere i'm either gonna head back to teddy's lookout or up to mount defiance i am yet to decide <laughs> but they're all probably gonna be facing the wrong way because obviously sunset's in the west and these kind of look out to the east so I will probably go to one for sunset tonight and one for sunrise in the morning and see how we go. So this is my beautiful little campsite. Look at this. How pretty. And there is literally no one here so another great tip if you can do the Great Ocean Road and you don't care about like swimming and like spending time at the beaches all that much. Uh, come in winter because there is literally no one here. <laughs> so I'm just going to set up. I've got like, a hiking tent. Uh, I've just put down a tarp because it is kind of muddy here and it'll just make it easier to clean and keep dry. All right, so I got pretty far setting up my tent, laid it down, or the base of it laid it down, and uh, I'm looking in the bag and I can't seem to find any poles for the tent. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure they're at home. Uh, so I don't have any reception here, so I'm gonna have to go back into town. I'll ring Matt because we grabbed them from his place, so I reckon they're set in a separate bag, maybe. I'll just ring him and double check to see if they're at his house, but... <laughs> pretty sure they are, and now I don't have a tent, so I'll head into Lawn, and maybe there's some sort of shop that sells a tent. If not, I'm gonna be booking a cabin here, I guess. <laughs> Far out. But I better hurry, because I shot at 5.30, I don't want to miss the sunset either. So anyway, I'll keep you updated. <laughs> All right, so quick update. I am currently driving to Colac. I just rang Matt. <laughs> the poles are indeed at his house, but that's okay. Doesn't matter. Everything will be fine. Um, I just said to him, I'll look up and see if there's anywhere in Lawn that sells camping gear that's still open, even though it's like a Sunday night. So like, even if there was, it probably will be shut. Anyway, there's like nothing. Like Lawn's a pretty small town. Um, so there is a K hub, in, like a Kmart in Colac which is 50 minutes from here. And they are open till six and they have a $14 two person tent in stock. I just rang them. <laughs> so that's where I'm heading now to go buy that. Um, hopefully Kmart saves the day. Also, how the fuck can they make a tent for $14? But anyway, whatever. Not complaining because it's a cheap fix. <laughs> um, but yeah, if not, if I couldn't find one, I would have just had to like see if they have a cabin or apartment available. Um, at the caravan park that I'm staying at, like worst case scenario, or worst case scenario, go somewhere else if they had nothing. But anyway, it's all good. I will keep you guys posted and see you in Colac. All right, so Kmart came through with the goods. <laughs> Here's our $14 two-person dome tent so stay tuned for a review coming soon <laughs> oh it's so funny i can't believe it happened but anyway it's fine we've got a tent i will be sleeping 
somewhere tonight that is not in my car, which is good. <laughs> so it said on the website it was water repellent. So I'm guessing that doesn't mean waterproof. <laughs> um, and it doesn't really have like a fly that kind of goes over the top. So I'm thinking I'll just set this up and then use the fly from our good Kathmandu tent and put it over the top and just peg it in and hope that it kind of holds up without poles in it. But anyway, it's fine. It will do. And I'm glad it was only a $14 fix. <laughs> cheaper than booking accommodation every night as well. So anyway, lesson learned, always check that everything is in your tent bag before you leave. And it's funny because I actually asked Matt to check the pegs because like it's freestanding. We often don't even use the pegs that come with it. So I was like, oh, can you just check the pegs are in there? Didn't even think about the poles. He didn't even think about the poles either. We normally keep them in the bag. So it wouldn't, it's not like we'd normally keep them out. So we even think to check. We're just like, oh, they're always in the bag. Never checked. Anyway, lesson learned, it's all good. <laughs> Everything happens for a reason, so it's fun. Got to come experience Colac. Anyway, the K-Hub is really nice here, but um, I'm gonna use this as an excuse to buy dinner tonight because by the time I get back, it's gonna be kind of late. So gonna go try to find something semi-healthy for dinner. Uh, might fill up with fuel also because it's cheaper here than on the Great Ocean Road. And then head back and make the most of my beautiful campsite. So it was really nice being able to hear the ocean and the river flowing last night and just super peaceful. Like I know it's winter, but there's only two other like couples of families camping. Um, so I was like completely by myself, which was nice, nice and quiet. And just, it's just beautiful. I love this like rock wall behind me. Amazing. And I wish I had time to hike up to Castle Rock, but next time add it to the list of things that I don't have time for this time. So I'm going to end this vlog here and start a new one for today. I'm heading out to Shea Oak Falls and then lots of other fun things like Polo Bay, Stevenson's Falls, the Otway Fly treetop walk. Um, so yeah, come along and watch the next video.